Hi people and welcome to the channel Lion Heart right here. So today in this video I want to talk about Zimbabwe right here. Yeah, I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm currently in Namibia but today on the 18th of April we are celebrating 44 years of independence. Wow! It's really amazing guys. So yeah, I want to share with you like briefly the history of our struggle for independence as Zimbabweans and I'll just share some information so that you guys get to understand where I come from so if there are any Zimbabweans in the house please share the videos with the rest of the world so they get to understand um, about you know our country and our history our culture and everything so Zimbabwe is a country on the southern part of the African continent we share a border with Mozambique. We also share a border with South Africa, um, Zambia, and Botswana. We are a landlocked country. Uh, on the African map, you will find a tipo shared country down there, a landlocked country. So our current president is uh, Emerson Mnangagwa. He's the current leader right now. Uh, the party that is ruling, it's an OPF. That's the party that is, you know, um, the main ruling party in in Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe we have like amazing culture, beautiful people, we have like a cocktail of tribes but mainly the dominant ones are like the Shonas and the Nebeles but we have other tribes uh, you know a lot and we speak approximately 16 languages but Shona and Nebele are like the, the main languages but English is like an official language that's the language that we speak. Um, we also have amazing wildlife. Uh, the big five, you find them in Zimbabwe. You can just visit Gona Regional National Park. You can visit Wanga National Park. And you also find this majestic, uh, greatest natural wonder of the world, Victoria Falls. Even though our Zambian friends want to claim it as theirs. But, like, you know, we, we both know uh, Victoria Falls uh, belongs to Zimbabwe. Anyway, we learn to share. Uh, Zambians are our brothers. So, yeah, we share with them. Um, so that's Zimbabwe for you. There are also like amazing places, Chinoy Caves, and you can visit the Great Zimbabwe where you get to learn about African uh, civilization. So, African civilization. So today, about the independent issue, before I share the details, I want to start by the, showing you the Zimbabwean flag and what it means. So this is the Zimbabwean flag right here. It has these colors, a triangle and a bed right here. So the green color represents vegetation uh, and agriculture. You know, our economy is mainly based on agriculture. Zimbabwe was actually once uh, the bread basket of Africa. And uh, we have yellow or gold, it represents our rich minerals. And then this one is the most important part of our video, red. Uh, it represents the, you know, blood shed during the war of liberation struggle so our heroes lost a lot of blood uh, a lot of people died fighting for independence in zimbabwe then black represents uh, the majority rule of the black people um yeah this one's just the same as these ones then white represents peace and unity man uh, we are united people in zimbabwe and then the zimbabwe bed this one is called the zimbabwe bed uh, it's known as Hungwe. In, I think that's like a Shona word, Hungwe. It's a bed. It's a fish ego, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I don't know much like for me to be able to explain to you in detail, but you can look it up on the internet. But it was mainly found uh, at uh, the Great Zimbabwe ruins. It shows that uh, uh, the people back then um, they used to believe that there was uh, like some spiritual stuff associated with with this bed and uh, yeah a lot of stuff I don't want to dwell much on that and then the star I think it represents this red star I think the, it represents the aspiration that we have as a country so that's Zimbabwe for you man so Zimbabwe before it was known as Zimbabwe it was called Rhodesia Rhodesia um, yeah Zimbabwe was southern Rhodesia and what we know today is Zambia was northern Rhodesia it was named after Cecil Rhodes, it was like uh, the British um, imperialist. As you all know, we were colonized by the British. And our capital city in Zimbabwe is Harare, one of you know the most organized, uh, developed cities in Africa. 
Uh, it's actually beautiful, trust me. I've uh, traveled to a few countries for me to know that Zimbabwe is actually developed and organized, even though we expect a bit more from it. But it's actually nice, the streets are amazing. You can also visit and see and see Zimbabwe for you. But it was once called Sosbe, but I think in 1982 we changed the name to, to Arare, and Zimbabwe also was changed from Rhodesia. So in 1960s and 1970s, that's where we were engaged in the war for liberation struggle. And one of the prominent leaders was Joshua Nkomo, and another one was Robert Mugabe. So these people actually played a crucial role uh, in the war for liberation struggle. And I know a lot of people, they know Mugabe. Hey, keep your England and I'll keep my Zimbabwe. <laughs> Mugabe was quite a character. He was great, and uh, we actually love him as Zimbabweans. We appreciate the work that he has done, especially the young Mugabe. We love him. Uh, even though we feel that he stayed in power for far too long, mm. he stayed in power for far too long, but I don't like the way he was removed. I felt like it was a kind of disrespect. I felt like there were some, you know, some other ways, you know, to make him, you know, resign. But I feel like him as a person was also supposed to resign a bit early. But I know a lot of people, they know Mugabe, yeah, he represented us well on the world stage. So, yeah, when you talk about independence in Zimbabwe, we talk about people like Mugabe, Joshua Nkomo, and even generals like uh, Mujuru. These names, if you Google them up, you'll be able to, to know about, uh, about uh, our struggle for independence. And uh, fast forward in 1980, after the Lancaster House Agreement in 1979, it was, I think in December, there was like an agreement in 1979, known as the Lancaster House Agreement. Um, that's when we did cease fire, we put weapons down, negotiated, and then we conducted elections. In 1980, we acquired our, our independence. Even Bob Marley came to perform on our Independence Day. Uh, and people were very happy, people were excited. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, an amazing, amazing, amazing event, amazing atmosphere, and, uh, you know, that's when we got our country back. So, uh, one of the main things that we were fighting for was freedom and the land. We wanted the land, and if you know, Mugabe was very, very popular for the land reform program, especially in the early 2000s. We get yeah, when the blacks took back the land, even though some people feel that uh, it was uh, not done properly, the land reform program. But hey, um, the land yeah, is better off, in, uh, you know, in the hands of the of the blacks. As I'm talking about this war independence issue, and you guys understanding where we are coming from as a country and where we are now. There are some, you know, like some mixed emotions because even though we took our country back from the whites, we also feel like there is some um, kind of, you know, I'll say modern uh, colonialism whereby our fellow uh, black people are now even suppressing other black people. But I shall talk about it as we progress. Uh, I shall talk about it as we progress with this, with this video. So um, we got our independence and people were happy. One of the most important reasons why we should celebrate independence is that historically we get to understand where we come from and get to understand the sacrifices that were done by our heroes. It was, you know, something that was really, really nice. And also it brings national identity. That's the uh, only time when we had, we have to come out as a nation and show that we are united we become blind to those like tribes and where the difference that we have people as people uh, even ideologically and we just identify ourselves as Zimbabweans and then we say okay let's celebrate together as Zimbabweans and so it's very very important for us to say yeah we celebrate independence because we get we, we become united and also for the younger generation to know yeah, how we acquired our country and why freedom is so important and why yeah, it is important to honor our heroes, uh, especially our war veterans. So it's very, very important for us to celebrate independence in that way. Also, for diplomatic relations, there are some countries that helped us uh, to acquire independence. Shout out to Tanzania, Julius Nyerere, uh, shout out to Samora Michelle, Mozambique, um, we also talk about even Ghana. I, I really appreciate Ghana. I'm sure Robert Ngabe was there in Ghana. Shout out to Kwame Nkrumah. 
um, I'm sure Mugabe adopted some of the, his ideologies from there. And he was, I think he even married from Ghana. So yeah, we really appreciate Ghanaians. So if there are any Ghanaians in the building, we really appreciate you. Um, something that is great. So yeah, some other leaders will actually come and celebrate with us. So we get to, you know, maintain good diplomatic relations. So all in all, independence uh, is important for us for those uh, reason so we get to celebrate. It's a typical in independent celebration in Zimbabwe is like the president will give a speech. There will be like you know a parade, and the artists, musicians, almost everyone who is into the arts industry they can perform and entertain people, and then they just celebrate. People just eat some food. Even um, people who are not like at the national event, uh, they just go out have fun and celebrate. I remember in rural areas we used to contribute and then we just go together and buy maybe a cow you kill it and then everyone will just eat and then we just celebrate so that's like a typical independent celebration in in zimbabwe so now coming back to my issue where i was talking about you know modern colonialism so zimbabwe as much as we attained our independence we also have like our problems currently even right now we are struggling with our currents uh, we, I remember Zimbabwe was quite, you know, uh, famous about the, um, what do you call this? I mean, our current was quite famous back then when we used the Piera checks. Almost in Zimbabwe, everyone became, almost everyone in Zimbabwe became a millionaire around that time. Well, but right now we're still struggling with our currency. Yeah, inflation is a problem. And uh, they've introduced a new currency, which is called the Zig Zimbabwe gold. Yeah, we support because we have the gold and um, we have a currency now that is backed by the gold. So we say, okay, let's, let's support the government, let's do this and that. But hopefully we'll succeed. But I was just trying to highlight we're still having some problems with our currency. So these are some of the challenges that we are facing. Unemployment is also a problem in Zimbabwe. You go to school, you graduate, there are no jobs. Uh, there's nepotism. You, you have to know someone for you to be able to, you know, to get a job. So um, even in hospitals, um, we are struggling with medication, a lot of stuff. So we have like problems. But in the midst of all these problems, there are people who are benefiting. We see uh, people who have, you know, a lot of funds. People who are doing corruption in the government. Uh, people who uh, engage, you know, mismanagement of our national resources and only the few are benefiting. So these few, I'm saying, according to my own analysis, I'd rather say this is like modern day colonialism, whereby they are even uh, colonizing the fellow black people. Because if I have something to eat and you have plenty more than enough, then that's really not fair. I can't afford to pay uh, for education and you can afford to pay education abroad. Uh, and you, the money that you're using, it's, you're actually using public funds. So it's, it's something that is really, really not fair. And one of the other things that we fought for, especially during the struggle for independence, was freedom, freedom of speech, right? You must be free to express yourself. But nowadays, sometimes you say uh, something wrong and you can end up in jail or uh, something very bad can happen can happen to you so these issues they need to be resolved because people must be able to express themselves because as much as there is freedom of speech but sometimes freedom after speech is not guaranteed so you can say whatever you want to say but then the consequences may might be severe so these things must be resolved and I'm saying this thing to my government and uh, I'm pleading with you guys, please can you do the right thing, try to correct the errors and we will support you. I'm very patriotic, I love my country, I'm Zimbabwean and I'm proud to be Zimbabwean wherever I go, even though right now it's kind of embarrassing uh, sometimes, uh, the way Zimbabweans are being treated in South Africa, people are crossing Limpopo River uh, to go seek for opportunities uh, in, in South Africa and the means that they're using to cross that river you know, some ways are very, very dangerous someone who choose to go and give birth to South Africa. That's really not fair. So you are really embarrassing us on the world stage. You must really do something nice. And it doesn't feel right to, to hear that a Zimbabwean died because of xenophobic attacks in South Africa or a Zimbabwean, 
is being deported, what, what, what. There are a lot of Zimbabweans outside Zimbabwe, UK, South Africa, uh, even here in Namibia, there are a lot. So you must be out here to enjoy and, you know, visit, uh, do something nice, business, not to go out there to seek for opportunities. So as much as we celebrate our independence, we appreciate what our heroes went through, we appreciate the efforts, we appreciate everything that was done by the people before us. And now we have, you know, to show that uh, they really fought for something. Uh, they fought for something meaningful because we don't want them to turn in their grave to say, this is not what we fought for. So let's uphold their leaders as the people and let's um, let's do something nice man so thank you so much for watching i i really love you so much uh, for always tuning in and uh, watching my videos uh, this is uh, lion heart you can subscribe to lion heart or see youtube channel uh, i just wanted to talk about our independence we're celebrating 44 years yes uh, we took our country from from the british that's like something nice so uh, but we'll be going back to some videos uh, showing you guys Namibia. Namibia is actually a great country. Namibia also celebrated their independence uh, in March, 21st of March. I think they ended up in a town called uh, Katima Mlilo. So yeah, it's a, it's a great thing. So many African countries were colonized and they suffered the effects of colonialism and they are trying to recover. And I want to end this video by a quote because the reason why we celebrate independence as Africans is because uh, we don't forget uh, the ill treatment that we got from that system, especially when you hear about the apartheid system in South Africa, it's it's quite sad. So in Zimbabwe, there's like a proverb. They say "chinokanga no idemo kete moti." Moti is like a tree. Demo is like an X. Kukanga no is like to forget. So what forgets is like an X, but the tree doesn't forget. So I'm sure you get what it means, right? So you know when you chop down the tree, uh, the tree will never forget that this is what the X did to me. So us as Africans, as Zimbabweans, will never forget those who colonized us. And even Mugabe, before he uh, before he died, I think he said something. He said he was not going to vote for those who tormented him, referring to those who removed him from power through uh, what is called a coup. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I didn't want to make this video too long. And uh, 18 April, Zimbabwe independence. Amazing stuff. See you in the next video. Like, share, and subscribe.